Well, match A23 is in the books in Italy's top flight, and here's a look at how things stand in the Serie A table. Inter Milan, four points clear at the top after a late, late winner from Dzeko, earning them all three points against Venezia. Then Napoli and Milan just behind them with 49 points, Atalanta with 43, and Juve just one point away from that top four, but still on the outside looking in. And here's a look at the bottom half of the table then as you can see Venezia just above that red line of relegation it was a heartbreaking loss for them at the weekend but Salernitana rock bottom of the table only with 10 points after 22 match days so far well it is Europe's tightest title race points an absolute premium in every single match it's been a great season so far and so for more on this let's bring in our very own Mike Grella, shall we, to join us now. He's off the golf course. He's now joining us. Off the golf course. And it was his birthday yesterday as well. Yeah. And Mike, what better way to spend your birthday than a day full of Serie A action? However, Mike, we didn't see the goals and the excitement that we're accustomed to, did we, this weekend? When What's going on in Italy's top flight? They said something like 452 games uh, and only 11 0, 0 games. And we did four of them in a row. So it was a little unlucky. I don't know if it was our new producer, Giancarlo. I don't know. Uh, but you're right. I was in the best place I wanted to be uh, with you guys, with my CBS family, hanging out. It was a lot of fun. And thank you for all the uh, birthday wishes. Hey, should, should, we, should we blame that Andre and Matteo, though? Because didn't they call all four of them? Four zero zero yeah. draws, yeah. That, that doesn't, That's them. That doesn't help no. Andre's career. He needs goals yeah, he does. to do his craft. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, Grilla, you've been doing such an amazing job. Obviously, the transition going from player to second life after professional football. I've been really impressed with what you've done on camera as well. So congratulations for that. But you are working on one unbelievable league this season. There has been, outside of this past weekend and obviously the weekend before, a lot of goals. I mean, goals galore. Uh, it's competitive at the top of the table, middle part of the table, trying to get into European places, relegation battle. This is one of the most entertaining Serie A campaigns I think I have ever ever witnessed what do you think uh, is the reason for that because it's been special I, I think the Italian football the Italian mentality uh, in general has changed a little bit I think they've uh, they've updated their way of playing I think they still have a very smart way of approaching the games tactically and technically but I also think they do commit more numbers forward I think they started to realize that when you press higher up the field and commit more numbers up the field that when you win those balls you're in you're closer to the opponent's goal so I think they've adopted a little bit of the modern football, the modern ideas. Unfortunately, yesterday, Juventus-Milan was almost like watching a Serie A game from five, ten years ago. Yeah. But this season, the last few seasons, we've gotten a very modernized uh, Serie A. I always say that uh, the Italian soccer is soccer school for the rest of the world, and I really believe that. They're very clever in the way they do things. Uh, I think even if you look at the Italian national team, the way they – played in the Euro. Still very compact and defensive, but there was moments where they pressed higher up the field. There was moments where they had little bits of, of good football. Um, but So they're modernizing, and I think that's the reason why we're seeing such an exciting city out with a ton of goals. Grillo, what's up? Jimmy Conrad here. Happy birthday, first and foremost. Second, tell me which players in Serie A have most impressed you this particular season? Is it Dusan Vlahovic, who might be leaving in January or maybe going somewhere in the summer? Is it Tammy Abraham, who scored 12 goals in his last 12 games in all competitions for Roma? Is there somebody else that I'm missing that's standing out for you? Let the people know, and I'm very curious as well. <laughs> Vlahovic is outrageous. I haven't seen a striker like him that can play with his back to goal in a very long time. With the intensity, the excitement when he scores a goal, the different types of goals he can score. I mean, he's scoring free kicks. He's in between the center backs. His hold-up play is unbelievable. I think he's very unique. He, for me, is one of the top players uh, in the Serie A. I think Zapata is a guy that you can't look past. I know he's older now, and a lot of people know about him, but also very Lukaku-like in his ability to also hurt you in open space. He can turn you in the midfield, and he's gone. So he can hurt you with his legs. He can hurt you with space. He can hurt you in tight spaces, uh, and he is a nightmare if you get on the wrong side of him inside the box aerially. Um, and, and then a guy a lot of people don't know about is Fratesi, for, who plays for Sassuolo. He is, since I started watching him uh, a couple seasons ago, he's such a, he has an incredible engine. He's box to box. He, he loves to score goals and he loves to get forward, but he also is pretty, pretty has a little bite in the tackle. So he's an exciting player, a, a complete midfielder. Like we have so many good ones in Italy, Barella, uh, Locatelli. He's another one that's a little bit under the radar, so watch out for him. 
Hey, Mike, how are you doing? Listen, uh, I would like to ask you kind of two questions because um, I, I'm very interested now. Uh, at the beginning of the season, we were talking about Inter, if they can make it once again uh, to the top flight and win again uh, the Serie A. And at the moment, checking what they got on the schedule coming up in the next, uh, next month is very, very tough. It's going to be a few very exciting weeks for them. If they can manage to get away, maybe we can see once again Inter going ahead. And... My other one is uh, about Roma and Mourinho. They are becoming more important, and I'm not sure if they're going to have enough, you that you follow a little bit more. Do they have enough to get in the top four? Because they got also a, an agenda that is going to be quite in their favorite because they got, I think, Genoa, Spezia, teams that they can win. So they can maybe uh, grab a little bit to the to four position and get in Champions League next season. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, for Inter, for me, I think they have enough to win because they are a very complete team. Uh, the first half of the season, they they have been they have been winning with uh, I think it was Bobo Vieri who said with a cigar in their mouth. Uh, they're making everything look very simple. They're scoring from set pieces. They're scoring late in the games. They defend very sound. They have unbelievable depth. So I know they have a difficult schedule. I don't want to say that they're going to do great in the Champions League. You know you know better than anyone that the Champions League is whoever gets in form at that moment. I don't know exactly how they'll perform in Europe, but I can tell you the Serie A is theirs to lose. They're the favorites for the Serie A, regardless of the schedule. Uh, when I think about Roma, you know, Roma haven't played necessarily well, but they have uh, still been okay. They've been got enough points to be in, in the top half of the table. Unfortunately, I don't see them being in the top four. Uh, Juventus has a lot of fight. The top teams are, are uh, excellent, and I don't see Roma having the quality to go into the top four. I know Mourinho recently has changed to a back five. That's helped them a lot. But unfortunately, they're missing a little bit of quality. Maybe in the years to come, but I don't think so this year. Grella off camera, Lucho Garcia was laughing when you said, I'm not sure how Inter are going to do against <laughs> Liverpool in the Champions League. Good luck with that one. <laughs> we'll see how they fare. I know Lucho is back in Liverpool. No surprise in that one. Uh, Grella, there's so much to talk about, isn't there, domestically? But let's turn our attention to the Italian national team then because a couple of eyebrows have been raised that Balotelli has been called back into a mini cam, of course, by Roberto Mancini. I mean, what's your reaction to this? My reaction is that Balotelli is an excellent player. He's a player with great quality. He has a very good goal scoring record for the Italian national team. However, for me, the Italian national team as a kid, from the way I understood it, was always the greatest honor to wear the shirt. And the only guys who can wear that shirt were the guys that were in form and the guys that deserved, they merited to wear that shirt in that moment. Balotelli, his time for me has passed to wear that shirt. I know it's Mancini and they have a, a relationship together. But for me, there's players that are more deserving of starting spots. Unfortunately, also one of the bad sides of Balotelli is that off the field, he has some issues. And in the locker room, we've seen he has some issues. He's been given many chances to do well, uh, and he hasn't done in that respect. So I would wonder if he's not the guy, he's not the number nine who's going to start every game and he's not 100% your guy, then he's going to end up being just purely a locker room guy or a substitution guy. Is he going to be able to not ruin what they have because the strength of the Italian national team now is that they are a team. They have very good energy and they have very good camaraderie. So that's what I wonder. And also the last three years, Balotelli really hasn't had a great goal scoring record, hasn't really played anywhere to note, unfortunately. So I don't think the call is merited. Could I be proved wrong if he gets in good form and helps us get to the World Cup and performs maybe even in the World Cup? Absolutely. He is a player with great quality, but I don't think it's a, a, he deserves this call up in particular. All right, Grella, just to catch everybody up, Italy, like the U.S., didn't qualify for the World Cup in 2018. And like the U.S., they won their Continental Trophy, the Euros. Congratulations, we won the Gold Cup. Now, how unprecedented would it be, and how will the Italian national team fans feel if they don't qualify for two consecutive World Cups? I consider that to be an unmitigated disaster, given the talent that you produce. But tell me emotionally, are you ready for this? Because that could be a real possibility. I'm ready for this. And... The que and the way I look at it, which makes, me, which makes me feel better, and all the Italians, I would think, feel better, is would you rather have won the Euro and not make it to two World Cups, or would you have rather have uh, not won the Euro and been to all the World Cups and just to participate, maybe losing the quarter or the semi? And I think most people will choose to win the Euro because we hadn't won it for so many years, and it, it brought great emotions to all Italian fans and all Italian Americans especially. Uh, so that's the way I'm looking at it. I know uh, they have very difficult two matches coming up, hopefully two matches coming up. 
but we will see. I also am realistic with the Italian national team. I think they have a great team and a great injury. They just come off winning the Euro, but they have two very old center backs. Uh, and if you compare this team to their 2006 World Cup winning team, I think they're short in quality as well. So we'll see. I, I'm, very, I'm looking at this situation very realistically, being an Italian fan. Grella, I love how many times you managed to mention in that one sentence that Italy won the Euro. But as Jimmy said, football can change very quickly, can't it? So you talked about your emotion of this team right now, but what's your confidence level in them actually making it to the World Cup? Yeah, I, I think what I do is I like to downplay it. I like to expect that we won't make it. And then if we make it, I'll be very happy. So I, I, I think it's going to be very, I think it's going to be very difficult. Uh, the first game, OK, we play at home. But the second game, it will be a way to Portugal or Turkey. From what I understand, it is always difficult to be a team with the quality of Turkey and a team of, uh, with a Cristiano Ronaldo and the other Portuguese players that are fantastic. It's going to be very difficult to go to their home and win again like we did in England uh, in Wembley. <laughs> another one, Grella, another one. You know what? I'll take winning the 2022 World Cup over losing the Euros. So uh, yes. hopefully Italy doesn't stand in our way there. Mike Grella, fantastic to see you. Good to have you with us. Thanks so much for bringing us up to date with all the latest over in Italy. Good to see you. Great seeing you guys. Thank you. And a reminder, the race for the Scudetto is well and truly on. You can catch it all on Paramount Plus. In addition to all 380 league matches, you can also watch the Coppa Italia and much, much more from Italy's top flight. And you get to watch Mike Greller and Marco Messina week in, week out. I mean, honestly, Ian, what could be better? Paramount Plus, your home for Serie A.